guys, welcome back to my channel, The Awkward Book Nerd. It is me, Alana. So for this video, I decided that I wanted to do a fun little tag video for you. I feel like I haven't done a tag video in a really long time, and that's mostly because I kept getting tagged in tag videos, and I wanted to do them, but I got overwhelmed and just kind of lost track of all of the videos that I needed to do, so I just didn't do them. <laughs> so I figured I would do this one because it was fun and it was like fitting for the time we're in right now, and yeah, so I wanted to do the finally fall tag. I did it last year, I think, and I thought it was really cool, so I decided to do it again this year. Plus, I was tagged by my friend Michelle from Michelle Reads YA, so I figured, why not? Did I get to talk about some of my favorite fall reads? Or at least some of my favorite 2019 reads in this tag as well. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in. Um, I have a list of the questions right here, which, if you see me looking down, that's why I'm reading off the list. And I'll tell you guys about some of these books. Okay, so, question number one. In fall, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. So for this one, I chose Grim Lovelies by Megan Shepard. I like was looking through my books, and I feel like they all have pretty good like settings and like descriptions and stuff like that. But I feel like the one that I always felt the most like this setting like speaks to me is like this one, um, just because it's set in Paris and it's very. Uh, how, I'm like can't think of the word right now but like very atmospheric and very I don't want to say gothic but gothic for lack of better words in that like atmosphere as well so it's very like a gothic Parisian vibe and I feel like this really like sucked me into that um when I was reading like the story and like, like getting this the settings descriptions and stuff like that and so I feel like this was a very good uh example of that basically I enjoyed this a lot. I had the second one, Midnight Beauties, uh, which is the, I think it's the last one in this. I think it's a duology. If you don't know, this is just about um, a world where there are beasties, goblins, witches, and pretties, which are the humans, and the world is basically ruled by the witches, and the witch that created the beasties um, ends up dying, and so they have to not figure out who did it. I mean, that's kind of like one of their goals, but their main main goal is to figure out a way to keep the spell that keeps them human um, from reversing before midnight. And so they're kind of going on a wild uh, adventure trying to figure out how to stop that from happening. So I liked it. I thought it was very atmospheric again, like I said earlier. And yeah, you guys should definitely check it out if you're looking for something, I don't know, to suck you in. Question number two is, nature is beautiful but also dying. Name a book that is beautifully written but also deals with a heavy topic. So for this one I chose Stronger Than You Know. I decided to do this one because uh, it's one of the most recent ones I think that has a pretty heavy topic that I've read and it's one of my favorites probably that I've read this year. Um, it's about a girl who basically is discovered uh, to be living in an abusive household. Her mother has basically kept her isolated and has been very, very abusive to her as she's gotten older. And when it's discovered, she ends up moving in with her aunt and her aunt's family. And she kind of has to adjust to what this means for her life now that she's not um, one being abused and that she actually has like freedom to be who she is and to live how she wants. And it's kind of, uh, dealing with that and it deals with the heavy topics of like PTSD and of course abuse and um, I just really loved how the topic was handled and I loved the healthy portrayal of therapy in the story as well and I just loved the healthy relationships that she ended up um, forming with the people that ended up being in her life after um, all of the abuse and yeah it's just one of my favorites and I definitely recommend it. Uh, I thank Sylvia all the time for introducing me to this because it's definitely one of my new new favorites. Number three is fall is back to school season. Share a nonfiction book that taught you something. Okay so I have not been reading any nonfiction this year. I'm gonna be really honest with you. Um, I, it just hasn't been my focus and I honestly struggle with nonfiction if I'm gonna be really honest with you. I, um, it takes me a really long time to finish a nonfiction book just because unlike with like uh, fiction books, like nonfiction I really want to take in the, what the person is saying because I know it's coming from like an actual um, realistic place if that makes sense. So I, d I never want to just speed read through it and like not soak in what's happening and so it just takes me a while and it just hasn't been my main focus this year. Maybe next year I'll focus more on some nonfiction reads that I have but 
I don't know. Um, next, number four, is in order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with people we love. Name a fictional family slash household slash friend group that you'd like to be a part of. Silver, this one I chose. I chose the Le Cor de Lions group in this book, <laughs> which is the beautiful by Renee Audio. <laughs> Adie. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know why I'm so obsessed with this read. I really don't. I mean, I do, but like, also I don't. But I just like would totally love to be in this group and just like be friends with Odette and wear pantsuits together and just have like a really cool ability like the rest of them do and just be suave in the night. Like I'm not a suave person. I'm the most awkward person you will meet and I do not do things as subtly as I wish. And so I just wish I had their like mannerisms and the like their cool factor. I would just love to be in this friend group. So I definitely choose this. And I would just love to be around Sebastian and <laughs> and Celine and make her my friend too. I just yeah, I would totally choose this group so much because uh, they're just so like mysterious but like attractive, and I just love it. So yeah, choose them. I choose them. All right, number five is the colorful leaves are piling upon the ground. Show us a pile of fall-colored spines. So, oops. So I. I found a couple books that kind of have a fallish color that I think kind of represents fall, fall to me. Um, I didn't have a lot, so these are the books that I kind of found, like this orangey, almost like auburn colorish is kind of what I'm thinking fall kind of represents to me. So these are the ones that I found. Um, I found an, an arc of Dear Sweet Pea that I got from work, um, The Elite by Kira Cass. Sweep by Kate Tiernan, which is one of my absolute favorite series, and Tiffany Sly Lives Here Now by Dana L. Davis, which is one of my favorite reads also. So, here you go. Number six, Fall is the Perfect Time for Some Storytelling by The Fireside. Share a book wherein somebody is telling a story. So, I chose Forded Queens by Astrid Schultz. I chose this because you're kind of getting multiple storytelling points in this. Um, you get multiple perspectives. Uh, you get the main girl's perspective, and then you get the perspective of the four queens. In, that are rep that are like subtly mentioned in the title, not so subtly mentioned in the title. Um, in case you don't know, this is about a girl who kind of gets roped in to this dark plot that has been um, placed against the queens. Uh, she accidentally sees a like vision or like a plot vision, whatever, uh, where all the queens die. And so she's kind of in a race against the clock to stop that from happening. Um, and as she's doing that, you're also getting the perspectives of the four queens as the plot uh, moves towards their deaths. And it's not, a it's not a spoiler because literally it's in the title and in the synopsis, but yeah. So that is a thing. But I love this so much. This is probably one of my favorite 2019 reads as well, just because uh, I loved getting the Queen's perspectives. Like, <laughs> I just loved it so much. I also loved Astrid Schultz's writing, and I loved this world. I really hope that one day she'll come back to this world and, like, maybe make a companion novel or something, because it would be really interesting to see uh, how that would play out. Because uh, I feel like there were, like, certain parts of this world you got to explore, but then others you didn't really get to explore, so I would love to see those explored more. All right, number seven is the nights are getting darker, share a dark, creepy read. So I don't read a lot of dark, creepy things, but the one book that I did uh, read this fall that I found kind of creepy and didn't, I was like not expecting it to be creepy at all because I didn't know the plot of the book before I even picked it up and then I read it and I was like, wow, this is creepy and very dark. But I chose Every Heart Adore by Shannon McGuire. I kid you not when I say that I was not expecting this to be so dark. I originally got, went into this thinking it was just this weird middle grade book. It's not a middle grade. It's it's not even YA. I'm pretty sure this is just sci-fi and like or fantasy, I don't know, but it was hella dark and hella creepy and I honestly enjoyed it, which surprised me the most because I'm usually not the biggest fan of like dark, creepy, gory things, but hey, uh, I think this is the year that I am discovering surprising things about myself because I've also been reading a lot of fantasy this year that I was also not expecting to happen. So 
we're just gonna go with it for right now. Number eight is the days are getting colder. Name a short heartwarming read that could warm up someone's cold and rainy day. So this next book I chose is not short, but honestly it's kind of short because I read it in one day, so I think you could do it too. But I chose <laughs> Red, White, and World Blue by Casey McQuiston. I know this isn't short, but oh my gosh, guys, this is the most recent heartwarming read I've read, which is why I chose it, because I didn't want to have to go through all my books and think about it. Oh my gosh, I love this story so much. <laughs> um, I This, like, warmed my heart. Like, I was reading a bunch of fantasy, and then I decided to pick this up, and it just, like, warmed me up so quick. I loved the genuine relationships that I found in this. Um... I think that was the thing that got like made me love this the most is just how genuine Henry and Alex are together and then also like the relationships they have with other people how genuine those relationships are too. I just loved it so much and I loved seeing their interactions and just seeing how much they cared for them like each other and then the other people in their lives. I just like <laughs> every time I think about it I'm just like oh, I wish I had someone to care about me that way besides my family but okay <laughs> it's fine <laughs> whatever but yeah love this definitely recommend this uh i know it's been super hyped i know so oh, many people talk about it but why not throw in my two cents about it because it's my channel but yeah definitely recommend this also just so heartwarming i think if like maybe if you are like reading like a bunch of fantasy or something and or since it's october you're reading since it's October while I'm filming this, if you're reading like a bunch of spoopy stuff, I definitely recommend that picking this up right after if you need something like to chill out on because I think it just, I don't know, it's just so quaint and like makes you feel good inside. <laughs> Alright, nine. Fall returns every year. Name an old favorite that you'd like to return to soon. So for this one, I took, it took me a minute to think about it, but then I was like, duh, a lot of the answers so obvious. You've been saying it all year. But I would really love to reread the Vampire Academy series. Um, this was one of my favorite series after Twilight during the whole like 2008 vampire craze. I loved the series so much. I loved Rose and Dimitri and I loved uh, Rose and Lisa and yeah, just all the things. And I would love to reread this series and then also um, pick up the companion series afterwards because I never ever got a chance to read it. And I have the first one and I know I want to reread it, but I feel like I should reread this first, maybe. I don't know. All right. Number 10 is fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite cozy reading accessory. So honestly, uh, either I would have to either say my sweaters like this one. I feel like this fit the vibe of the video, so I put it on because it has all the colors and stuff and it's really soft. Uh, American Eagle but also um, I was just gonna say blankets like I love to lay in my bed and just like snuggle into blankets while I'm reading because I just love feeling comfortable and warm um, so I feel like that's like my favorite cozy accessory otherwise I don't know if I have a real like like an actual accessory that I use if that makes sense so um, I'm gonna start trying to get into tea so maybe tea will become my new accessory I don't know but we'll see number 11 is to tag a friend or some people or whoever so specifically I'm gonna tag Nikki from XO Nikki and Jessica from um, Jessica Nicole Dickerson and Justin from Ghost Reader because why not and if you want to do this video I tag you as well you don't need my permission to do it but if you are wanting to do it I definitely tag you if you need that to do it whatever uh, if you like the video, go ahead and like it down below. If you have any comments on any of my answers, please comment in them below. If you are not good at commenting, I'm going to go ahead and say leave me an emoji down below. I'm still in the video for my friend Sylvia from Mushroom Ferment, and I love seeing you guys comment, and I love interacting with you on this, this platform. And if you all want to see more videos from me, please subscribe down below. You are all sunflowers in a world full of weeds, and I hope you are having a wonderful fall.